You've never died before. What if death isn't the end of you? Not because you're saved, or because your soul floats to some other place, but because you were never a separate being to begin with. Erwin Schrödinger, the Nobel Prize-winning father of quantum mechanics, is best known for his cat, the famous paradox that shows how quantum states remain undefined until observed. But few know that Schrödinger also wrote deeply about consciousness, and about what happens to it when we die. Consciousness, he once said, is never experienced in the plural, only in the singular. In other words, you don't have a consciousness. You are part of consciousness itself. In this video, we'll explore how Schrodinger's quantum worldview, his philosophical writings, and his fascination with Vedantic mysticism led him to a radical idea that death is not what we think it is, because the soul is not what we've been told it is. To understand Schrodinger's view on death, we first need to understand what he thought about the self. And the short answer is, it's an illusion. Schrodinger believed that personal identity, the idea of my mind and your mind as fundamentally separate, was a useful fiction, not a fact. He wrote, the overall number of minds is just one. This wasn't poetic, it was philosophical and metaphysical. He believed that consciousness is a singular field, and what we call the individual self is simply a temporary ripple in that field, like a wave appearing briefly on the surface of a vast ocean. When that wave dissolves, the ocean remains. So for Schrodinger, death was not the annihilation of consciousness, but the dissolution of an illusion, the fading of the localized story we mistake for our true nature. In one of his most quoted reflections, Schrodinger writes, Consciousness is never experienced in the plural, only in the singular. What does this mean? It means that although we all appear to have separate minds, no one has ever directly experienced more than one stream of awareness. You never experience someone else's consciousness. You only ever experience this right now, this window of being. Schrodinger believed this was not a coincidence. It was a clue. The multiplicity of selves, he argued, is an illusion of form, not a fact of essence. We are not truly many. We are one, fragmented only by biology and bounded perspective. And if that's true, then death is not the end of consciousness. It's the end of the illusion that this consciousness belonged to you. Schrodinger was deeply influenced by Advaita Vedanta, a school of Hindu philosophy that teaches non-duality. The idea that Atman, the individual soul, is identical to Brahman, the ultimate reality. He saw a profound resonance between quantum physics and Vedantic insight. In the same way that quantum particles exist in superposition until observed, Vedanta teaches that reality is undifferentiated until witnessed by consciousness. Schrodinger didn't see consciousness as emerging from matter. He saw matter as emerging within consciousness. And more than that, he saw this consciousness as timeless, spaceless, and deathless. The witness, that part of you which observes, is not born, and it does not die. It simply is. Personal identity is temporary, but the witness, the silent background of awareness, that, Schrodinger believed, is eternal. If consciousness is not individual, then what becomes of the soul? Schrodinger didn't use the word soul in the religious sense. He saw it as a metaphor for the continuity of awareness, not something trapped in a body, but something that shines through it. Just as the sun shines through many windows without being divided, consciousness, he believed, shines through every mind without being multiplied. So when the body dies, when the window shatters, does the light disappear? No. The window is gone, but the light remains. In this sense, you were never born, and therefore you cannot die. What dies is the form, the personality, the narrative. What remains is the underlying field of being untouched, unborn, undivided. And that is what Schrodinger believed you truly are. This leads to a profound reinterpretation of death. In Schrodinger's view, death is not a disappearance. It is a remerging, a return to what you never truly left. Imagine the ocean mistaking itself for a single wave. It rises, it dances, it crashes, and it thinks, I am gone. But the ocean remains. Schrodinger saw death not as an end point, but as a return not to a place, but to truth. 
the truth that there was never more than one experiencer, that all lives, all perspectives, all moments of being are facets of the same infinite mirror. This wasn't fantasy for Schrodinger, it was logic, it was physics, and it was also something deeper, a spiritual intuition grounded in science. Today, more scientists are beginning to question the hard materialist view that consciousness is merely brain chemistry. Quantum models of the mind, like those proposed by Penrose, Hameroff, and others, suggest that consciousness may be woven into the quantum fabric of reality itself. Schrodinger's early musings anticipated this. He sensed that there is no clear boundary between mind and matter, between subject and object. The more deeply we look into the quantum world, the more reality begins to look like a field of information, probabilities, and potentialities waiting to be witnessed. Schrodinger believed that the witness, the observer, is not separate from the field. The witness is the field in conscious form. And so when your life ends, the field does not disappear. It simply reconfigures, reabsorbs, returns to itself. This is the heart of it. If there is no you in the way you think, if yourself is a temporary pattern in consciousness, not a permanent entity, then what actually dies? The pattern ends. The story concludes, but the screen, the awareness upon which it played, remains. This doesn't mean reincarnation in the personal sense or immortality in the egoic sense. It means that you are the light, not the lamp. The lamp may break, but the light was never confined to it. Schrodinger's greatest insight was not about particles or cats in boxes. It was about you, the illusion of separateness and the deeper truth beneath it, that you are not a fragment or a fluke, you are reality itself, looking out through a temporary mask. Erwin Schrödinger shattered our understanding of the physical world, but he also offered a quiet revolution of the soul. He taught us that death is not the enemy of life, it is the veil of illusion being lifted, that the self is not a possession, it is a performance, and that consciousness your consciousness is not yours at all, but the universe becoming aware of itself for a while in your form. Consciousness is never experienced in the plural, only in the singular. If this speaks to something inside you, leave a comment. Have you ever glimpsed that there's only one awareness looking through many eyes? And if you're ready to keep uncovering the mystery at the heart of existence, subscribe. This channel's mission is to explore different ideas and perspectives on reality. If you are a curious human being and an open-minded individual seeking spiritual clarity, join our community. This is your place. Thank you so much for being here, because what you are seeking may already be what you are.